make Hurry, Mr. Bergeron's on Don't forget the popcorn, Frank Coming, dear Being a social worker, when I meet with families, my role isn't about to walk in the house and say, here, sign here, you want to come with us. It's to find out what your needs are and to match those needs with a solution. If we meet them, great, but if I can meet you with the right resources, then that's what it's about. Hospice is a Medicare covered benefit, but just like VNA, VNA is an umbrella term, but there's several VNAs that, that meet those needs. So when somebody says to you, maybe it's time for hospice, I encourage you to look at what hospice agencies there are. I'm just one hospice agency, but there are several hospice agencies. And you might want to interview different agencies to find the right fit for you. So just keep that in mind too. So all of this is covered free under the benefit. We already talked about that. <laughs> so anywhere you go, just keep in mind, that the um, focus is on quality of life, not quantity of life. And I like to just throw out these statistics because this is, this is a statistic that's not um, my statistic. It's nationally done across the board. Another myth about hospice is that people die quicker on hospice. I hear this all the time. You're just gonna load them up with morphine and they're gonna die faster. Has anyone ever heard that before? I see a lot of nodding in the room, so I know I've people heard that. Realistically and statistically, people live longer on hospice than the same person that doesn't choose hospice. In fact, if two patients side by side with the same disease process and one chooses hospice and one does not, the one who chooses hospice will live longer. On average, it's 29 days longer. If a person has congested heart failure, that person will live 81 days longer. And that's statistically across the board. And why is that? Do you all know what the hospice benefit includes? A free, 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 free. Did I mention free? <laughs> you get a home health aide, a social worker, a nurse, a chaplain, a volunteer, all of these extra services on top of what you already might have covered in the nursing home and all of that stuff. And when people have all of these extra nurturing services, plus a bedside doctor visit if it's needed, things like that, all of a sudden people feel good about themselves. People are getting the extra nurturance. People are getting this extra companionship. And all of a sudden people feel good again. And what we do is what we see is that people are living longer because of that. And, and by the way, it also makes your kids feel a whole lot better. Yeah. People who would think just be overwhelmed by the notion that, oh, geez, mom's at home and she's like really frail. I don't know if I can take care of her. Well, if you know that all this is there, right, and that all you're doing is kind of, you're the child kind of managing all of these folks that are coming in and dealing with them, it kind of can really change your frame of mind. There is not enough time in the day to talk about how many miracles I've seen over and over and over again, not just of the patients that we've cared for, but with what we've seen with the families and the peace that we brought to the families and the dignified deaths that have occurred. And you know, a lot of the patients that we care for, sometimes they're not very responsive, but the peace that we brought to the families and the peace that we brought to the siblings and the points that Deb Allen had brought up today about having the um, conversations before the crisis. I've seen the crisis and I've seen when these conversations aren't done and the crisis of the siblings, well mom would have wanted this and mom would have wanted that and all that had to have been taking place was the conversation after those glasses of wine. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of well, that. Mom was drunk when she said that. Just a kid. You know, so I can't, I can't impress upon how important these conversations While everyone in this room is well and healthy and, you know, make sure you have these conversations because I see at the end of, you know, the, the turmoil that it causes among the, uh, among the siblings and it's, you know, it's a simple conversation and really don't do it for you, do it for your kids, if I can say anything. Um, 
But some of these, one, one, one last thing I like to say is that a lot of people know that, you know, oh, hospice is for cancer patients, but cancer is actually our um, slowest, you know, it's not the um, fastest growing um, diagnosis anymore, dementia is. Cancer patients are less than half percent of, half of all of our patients now. Um, what I do want you to look at and think about for yourself is that if you know anybody that has things like this, we have a diagnosis that's, it's a funny term, it's called debility unspecified and you don't need to remember that. But what I do want you to think about is that if you know somebody who has all of these things that are making them decline very, very quickly and making them lose all this like weight unexplained and all of these things in and out of the hospital, infections, all of this stuff that in the doctor's opinion still makes the doctor feel like they're gonna pass away within six months, even though they don't have a definitive cancer, end stage renal disease, liver disease, or something like that, we still can care for them if the doctor still feels like they have um, a terminal illness. So those are some of the things that I want people to think of because usually people only think of hospice when they think of cancer. So I want you to think about, I guess, a little bit more outside the box and that there are many illnesses in which hospice can take care of patients. Um, in this cartoon, a doctor's handing his patient a bottle of pills saying, I want you to take one of these every day until I think of something else. <laughs> And um, hospice is a 24-hour support program, Medicare. I know you're not used to hearing Medicare putting limits on things, I know, but we will not, Medicare will not pay for hospice to be bedside 24 hours a day, but one of the benefits is that they employ the nurse 24 hours a day. So if you do happen to need a nurse visit at three o'clock in the morning, you can call us and we will be there. We are a support for the family 24 hours a day. Um, and we are there if you do have private caregivers in the home, we're there to support whoever's an extension of the patient and the family. Um, and again, I can't stress enough, it's not about how many days you live, it's about the quality of those days. It's always about quality of life, not quantity of life. If you have any more questions, I have brochures business cards, anybody can come up and talk to any of us afterwards too, and I do appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. And we're gonna have a little time for, que for questions afterwards. Next slide. Um, but I wanted to kind of hear that, because once again, at, like with the 60 day, the 60 day plan, many people just had no idea about this. I think, I think factoring this into for whatever your plan is for how you would deal with frailty in your family is really important. As we have mentioned, I'm just gonna go through these briefly. There were two things though, that you have to have, that you have to have, and you ought to have right now, that your kids ought to have too, but certainly everybody here ought to have. And that is power of attorney and a healthcare policy. What are they? A power of attorney gives somebody else the power to do everything that you can do, as long as that's what it says. It's a general power of attorney, except to make your medical decisions for you. A healthcare proxy allows somebody else to make your medical decisions for you. I'm just gonna talk about the two of them very briefly. <laughs> have a valid power of attorney, it has to be signed, right? Um, doesn't have to be um, witnessed here in Massachusetts. Um, many people are very concerned about giving a power of attorney to somebody because they know it does give somebody a lot of power. Like the power to take all the money out of your bank account, or the power to sell your house, how to do big things. And so people are sometimes concerned about that. If you've got that kind of concern, there are two easy <laughs> solutions. One is you can actually build you can make your power of attorney a so-called springing power of attorney that only takes effect once your doctor has certified that you are, un, you know, are incapable of making these kinds of decisions or once somebody else has certified that. You can build that language right into the power of attorney. A second possibility, and the most common one, is if you've got that kind of concern, leave your power of attorney in a safe place. Don't necessarily give it to the person that you've named until you know that you need it, or until somebody decides that you need it. We end up holding a lot of powers of attorney, lawyers in lawyers' offices, with an escrow letter, a letter from you that would say to me, keep this power of attorney until you are persuaded that I cannot make my you know, legal decisions, and then you give it to the person who is who might name, right? So you've got some kind of control, if that is a concern. Um, 
Most people will take a copy of the power of attorney, but you probably want that language right in your power of attorney, something saying that a copy of it is as good as the original. The only time that's not the case is in the case of a, of a, uh, of a deed, uh, which also goes to the, the last one. Your power of attorney doesn't have to be notarized unless it's being used by the person you've named to sell real estate on your behalf or to transfer it on your behalf. In that case, the original power of attorney, which has to be notarized, has to be recorded at the time that the deed gets recorded. Um, and it has to be durable. The power of attorney actually has to say in it someplace, it is my intention that this power would, su would survive my subsequent incapacity, that it will stay in existence even though I'm, I, I, can, I, I no longer have the power to revoke it. That language has to be in there. Next slide. 